The simple definition of necrosis is death of cells usually in a localised area of the body. There are many things that will cause necrosis. These can be categorised as ischemia, trauma, radiation, infections, extreme temperatures, toxins and immunological conditions. This is a picture of a coronary artery blocked by a thrombus and this will cause ischemia of the tissue it is supplying with eventual necrosis. There are two main types of necrosis, the most common being coagulative necrosis and the other type is liquefactive or colliquative necrosis. Coagulative necrosis can occur anywhere in the body apart from the brain. It is caused by ischemia or hypoxia and histologically the cellular art outlines are initially preserved with loss of nuclei. This is a section of testis that has undergone hemorrhagic infarction as a result of torsion and you can see the ghost outlines of the seminiferous tubules devoid of their nuclei. Another cause of coagulative necrosis is myocardial infarction. Here you can see a good gross example of a myocardial infarct. Infections can cause liquefactive necrosis because the neutrophil polymorphs release lytic enzymes that liquefy the cells, resulting in abscess formation. Liquefactive necrosis occurs in the brain because of the lack of supporting tissues. And this is a good example of a recent cerebral infarct on the right side of the picture that we are zooming into with a rather gelatinous cut surface. Here is another example of a liquefactive focus of necrosis and this is a liver abscess. And this is the histological appearance of an abscess where there are numerous neutrophil polymorphs that have released proteolytic enzymes dissolving the other cells in the region. Other types of necrosis include gangrenous, caseous, fat necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis. Gangrenous necrosis affects the gut and the extremities and here there is putrefaction caused by certain bacteria, particularly Clostridia types this results in a black appearance caused by deposition of foul-smelling iron sulphide from degraded haemoglobin. This piece of small bowel is infarcted, resulting in gangrenous necrosis, explaining the blackened appearance. And the black toe here is an example of gangrenous necrosis in a diabetic foot. TB causes a special type of necrosis called caseous necrosis or caseation. Here you can see tuberculosis of the epididymis with caseation in the epididymis. And this is the histological appearance of caseation down a microscope and this is the amorphous pink area you can see at the centre of the picture. Fat necrosis can occur in two main settings. One is in acute pancreatitis where there is a release of lipase from the inflamed pancreas causing digestion of the surrounding fat resulting in white soaps being produced. Another cause is trauma where fat is liberated from damaged adipose tissue and this causes an inflammatory response and necrosis. This is an example of fat necrosis in a Morton's neuroma as a result of trauma and you can clearly see the ghost outlines of the fat cells. This slice of pancreas shows the gross appearance of acute pancreatitis. The white areas are foci of fat necrosis that resemble soap.
In malignant hypertension, the pressure damage to the arterial wall results in fibrin and plasma proteins being deposited. The necrosis causes weakness of the vessel wall, making it prone to rupture and hemorrhage. Fibrinoid necrosis may also be immune-mediated. The orange part of this arterial wall is a focus of fibrinoid necrosis. And this was from a case of malignant hypertension. Finally, there is another type of cell death, and that is apoptosis. And it is worth comparing the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. Very briefly, necrosis is a pathological condition. Apoptosis is usually physiological, or it can be pathological. Necrosis is uncontrolled cell death. Apoptosis is controlled cell death. In necrosis, the cells swell. And in apoptosis, they shrink into apoptotic bodies. In necrosis, it is groups of neighbouring cells that die. And in apoptosis, it is single cells that die. And in necrosis, there is an inflammatory response to the necrotic tissue. And in apoptosis, there is no inflammatory response. If you want to find out more about apoptosis, have a look at the video, What is Apoptosis? I shall put the link on the end screen coming up now.